We cap, are we capturing this? How's it going, babe? Cool. So far, so good. That's great. Save some money. Don't you need a little bit of that? Turn these ones off in front? I think we do. Just so this is more fair contrast here. Right. We're going to take it more serious than we have in the past. I just watched these six episodes of Beauty and Blinders.
because somebody did hear it outside the fence. And he heard it very, very clear.
those are odd numbers.
cannot run to the box because you can't have no goalie on the, you can't not have a goalie on the field. So you can't have him run to the box. He can um, One smart play I did see that, that we would practice, which was very cool, was uh, there was a play in the corner of the field away from the uh, substitution box where a short stick D midi broke a shaft. So he breaks a shaft, he's running off the field, and um, our attackman sees that, he runs off the field to get our guy on there so we can get on quicker. I thought that was a really heads up play uh, by the attackman. I thought that was really, that was kind of neat. So I learned that. Uh, and then we had no timeouts. Uh, they called the timeout. And, um, and then, then we said, you know, the game was on the field. And the faceoff guy stayed on the field, won the faceoff on like a scrap, our short stick team picked it up, threw it to the attackman, and their faceoff <coughs> face guy ran off the field. So our faceoff guy just kind of trailed the play. They threw it. to go. Well, we're back. So sorry. I apologize uh, on behalf of uh, myself, I, I guess, right? <laughs> uh, of, uh, but we, we've got it fixed. Uh, Chad Lampman at home, we want to thank Chad. Is that true? Yes. All right, doing major work at home, helping us get the audio reinstated. So for those of you who stayed with us, thank you very much. Um, all right, now we got, so we're, we're moving to live video. You've seen the screen at least. You didn't have audio, but you did see the screen, so you should be up with us right now. All right, so all three coaches here are going to have something to say as Coach Crotty lets it roll. Can you turn off one more set of... Yeah, I can. I'll turn off another set of lights. Yeah, that's much better. All right. All right, Matt, you want to explain the, uh, the drill up here up top? Um, yeah, so the drill up top is basically, we got the, we're simulating dodging out of the box. So we have, now I'll talk about it. All right, so we have a guy at the corner of the box, one more to the middle of the field, then one more to the guy dodging out of the box. We have a defenseman starting at the blue line and he can't go out and meet that midi until the ball's in the air to him. So really hard drill for, for a defenseman. Short stick, especially LSM, but we're trying not to get chipped or touched outside the box when we're dodging. We're trying to dodge around people. Um, so it's, it's, it's similar to what our offense would look like if this is the last guy on the field. All right, we get the ball around, move the ball, and we go. It's a good job of getting skinny right there. He's showing him his back, right? Forces the trail check. Um, that was a good job right there, not getting touched outside the box. Again, it's not an unbelievable amount of footwork. It's more just being smart and not getting touched outside there. Now let's go back in that a little bit, Ned. Uh, here's, here's what we were trying to accomplish on attack. Now, I didn't care that the defense knew what was coming because in my mind, if you can have success when the defender knows what's coming, then what happens, you know, first of all, you're gonna gain confidence. Second of all, uh, if you, you know, what's gonna happen when the defense doesn't know what's coming? And so all we were trying to do was hit this white line, change direction, try to turn a corner. If we couldn't, we wanted to bounce here, we didn't, but at least we get to five and five and we do get a step away here. And we gotta drop the hips and move a little quicker, but that's why you practice in the fall, right? Is, is to, to get to do some of those things. Let's see, if, uh, let's see who's next here, we're up top. Go ahead, Matt. Pretty good job. It's not great stick protection. You see, as he gets close to the defender, he's running pretty fat. His shoulders aren't turned over. His hands don't get to his back hip, and his shoulders are still pretty much going towards the end line. They're not rotated over his hips. Um, and then, you know, the defenseman gets a piece of him. Right, so let's go back here again, then, and here again. This has been executed pretty well. All right, we have an attackman. Changes direction, switches hands, gets to five and five, 
and now can be a threat to the cage and decides to rocker step, great, great. So for those last two, I'm happy. Yeah, this is a really good job outside the box here. Um, you know, you can't have it all. This is a freshman who doesn't do a great job with the angle that he's shooting at. But it's the, you know, again, he's just, that's just being an athlete. You know, he's, he sees the defenseman open up his head, so he changes direction. And he opens up, changes, opens up, changes, gets him to turn his back. You know, so that's a really good job of playing with his hands free the whole time, looking threatening. I imagine a game he would have got slid to, and then he would have been able to move the ball and not take such a bad angle shot. But that's the point of the drill outside the box is to have it look like that a little bit. All right, now uh, let's go back on that one. Now sometimes, I mean, listen, you know, you, I don't want to be uh, extremely anal on every rep, but the attackman had an opportunity to run past this guy, and he does. Now, I would say this, that, you know, this guy is a superior athlete to the other, but that doesn't matter always. And so he lunges, he gets himself trailing the attackman, and attackman decides he's going to turn the corner and has a pretty good look at the goal. All right, so that's a really bad job outside the box. Right? I mean, this, this is a short to cover him. I mean, there's, you know, 75 yards up here. I don't know how you get touched, uh, but you can see, as Ned was talking earlier, his footwork is just really bad. He takes these short, choppy steps. Before he gets to him, I suppose, it's just, like, those, that footwork right there is just not good. There's no plan there, you know? So, you know, that's one of our best athletes who just minimizes himself by really bad footwork. Freeze for a second, Ned. Here's an old uh, axiom. I, I believe it still holds true. The faster you run on offense, the faster the defender runs. The faster he runs, the less checks he can throw. If you go half speed, he's going to go half speed. He goes half speed, he's under control, he can throw more checks. The faster you run with the ball, right, the more difficult you are to defend. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can change direction. Now, I blow the whistle on this one because this guy doesn't even try. He doesn't try to change direction. And the reason he doesn't try, because he's a natural righty and he doesn't really want to come back lefty. And that's why. Now, he can give me some other reason. He can say, well, coach, he was doing this. Uh-uh. All right? I've been around you. I've been around the block. That's what you're doing. Don't do it. Try it. I know you can be successful. That's a good job outside the box. We're getting the Change the direction once he sees the defense drop step. Okay, right there, it was kind of like a little truncated move here, but at least we're changing direction. You know, we're getting to know what that feels like with somebody defending us. And, um, you know, it's not quite five and five, and it's not quite the goal on extended. It's somewhere in the middle there. Um, yeah, it's a good job. Just change the direction. Once the defense opens up their hips and starts to run, you put your foot in the ground and go the other way, making open his hips again. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's very simple athletics right there. If you run straight ahead and they have to stop and turn their hips, you get a better shot. You know, getting to five and five, change direction twice there. I just want to see, I would prefer a one change of direction. Yeah, all the wing dies just come from the two on twos. Yep. Okay, a little out of control on the five and five, but at least he changed direction. He got to five and five. Now we've got to work on him sitting down when he gets to five and five so we can step away with a little bit more power. Mm, that one was funky. Okay, tried to inside roll, couldn't. And sometimes, uh, you can just hold it for a second. Sometimes guys are going to play to the drill. 
Now one on one, everybody feels like you've got to get a shot off. Now that we're six on six, we might say, listen, that's not a shot that you want to take. You know, let's pull it out and then let's live to fight another day and, and let's continue to play and you know, run the offense. But so, you know, you got to also, you know, kind of balance, you know, what you expect out of these one-on-one -on -one drills um, to know, you know, what was appropriate, what's not. And then you got to let them know and say, listen, get, you know, just remember game time, you don't have to do that. You know, three seconds left on the clock, in the clock in the quarter, sure. You know, but other than that, that's not really quite necessary. Anything you want to finish up with this one? Yeah, I know. We're flipping sides right now, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we can stop this one. All right, so we'll go to the next uh, slide. All right, so that's a little bit of, the, uh, of this morning's one-on-one uh, -on -one drills and what we were trying to accomplish in that drill from up top and behind. You know, once again, sometimes you have to be a little thick-headed as a coach, and sometimes you got to let them go a little bit. You know, you got to demand to, to have them play the way you want them to play, all right? Uh, and, and by doing so, eventually you can let the reins off, but by showing them what the possibilities are. And, and so that's, to me, that's, that was a big part of this morning. All right, do we want to talk about defense here? Right now, I guess we would just reshow what we just kind of took a look at. Yeah, sure. All right. So basically, we're going we're gonna, to you know, kind of go backwards now, and we're just going to show you a little bit. Well, you can show that, but you know, we're going to show individual defense. Once again, playing alone. Now, you never play alone individually, right? You got, you got five other teammates, and, but again, this is where you hone your skills. We call it winning battles, right? We want to win a battle. Now, before I'm going to preface this by saying, what is your defensive philosophy, all right? Some teams, depending on how you want to play the ball behind the cage, from the wings and up top. Some teams will say, we want to drive everybody down the alley. Some people will say, we want to drive people to the middle of the field. Some people will say, we're going to drive people in the direction of our scouting report. Hey, we know this guy's a, a, a predominant righty, we're going to make him go left. Some people will say, we're going to play two sides of the ball and we're not going to slide to you. What is your philosophy? Who are you working with? What is your personnel? Do you, do you change your philosophy uh, when your poles are on the ball or when your short sticks are on the ball? Whatever you decide, it's, it's right. It's, it's all good. It doesn't matter uh, how you play. It's that what you believe in, and you got to teach it and teach it consistently. I even said this to the USA guys Friday night or Saturday. I said, listen, one guy makes a decision, he's right, even if he's wrong and then everybody else got to play behind him accordingly. So if he decides to play one way and you don't quite really understand it or you, you, know, you, you were caught by surprise, it doesn't matter. You got to cover up for him and then we got to play together. So that's what we're going to show you right now. Ned, you can kind of take the lead a little bit here um, and then we'll, we'll help and fill in and We're this far outside the box on this uh, initiation dodge from up top. Really more so worried about shading our guy. They can't score from out here, right? So we just want to um, try to focus on opening our hips, turning and running. As you get closer to this straight line, that's what we want to talk about and start focusing on control, getting our stick on our guy and controlling where he goes. And then as he gets close to the paint area, about nine yards off the crease, we want to start trying to I disrupt. So, so we've got shading, control, disrupt. Um, so you want to, as you've seen from our guys, you know, anytime, as I said before, as an offensive player, if a guy's lazy coming out, I've got a 15-yard head start, that makes my job very easy. So you want to work to get out to cut the, um, cut the gap as much as we possibly can. Shade, that's a pretty good job defensively. We got up, we shaded where we wanted to get to. We didn't get blown out one way or the other. Um, you know, meaning we didn't you know, open our hips the wrong way and have to turn around and um, that's a dodge we're pretty confident we wouldn't have had to slide to. Defensive player did a good job running with them, getting their hands on them and disrupting the shot. Obviously, credit to the offensive player that went in, but from a defensive perspective, that was pretty much spot on. Now as coaches, you got to think about your personnel. Do we have guys who can get out there all the way without getting run right by? As players, you have to know your own speed, your own kind of quickness, how much can you shade a guy before you totally just expose yourself. 
Um, so if I'm playing defense on Coach Dino and I know he's a righty, I might want to come out here and just kind of shade him this way. I don't have to get up on his hip, just shade him so I know he's going this way. As he gets by me, then turn and run so he can't roll back. Um, and one of the things here, you know, we haven't mentioned the role of the goalie in any of these drills, but it helps a lot when you play good defense and then the goalie makes the save. And then when the goalie lets it in, you still have to reward, you know, you still have to reward the defender and say, man, that's a really good job. And that's, and then you got to maybe get the goalie, give him a little gas and say, hey, listen, you know, you know, that's, that's a play. If we play that kind of defense, you need to make that save. Um, and, and so, you know, the, the goalie can save your bacon a lot of times when you make a mistake, but when you play good defense, you know, it would really be helpful for him to be rewarded. Uh, I'm just going to go over, the, I'll go over this next one here. This one? All right, so defensively, the technique is we want to trail the X behind the goal. We have our stick, JT's got his stick in front. He's running with the offensive player and he's, he's allowing him to get to the X, right? A technique we call trailing the X because the defender can, if, if the attackman decides to roll back, we can run through the crease, meet him at the goal line, and at the goal line, we can try to shove him and get him off his, court, get him off his path, just like a defensive back and a wide receiver. Now here, we want to lock up, and JT does a great job of keeping his stick in front, right? Probably would like him to get a little bit lower, but JP is, is really strong, his upper body, and he's square, he's square to the sideline, does a really nice job. Back in that back. So here are our defensive player does a good job opening his hips. Offensive player tries to cut back, we don't bite on it. But here, right about here, he goes for a slap check with a short stick. We, it's for whatever reason, so if some of our guys, it's a hard uh, habit to break. A slap check with a short stick does absolutely nothing, especially at this level with the size of the players that we see in practice every day and that we put, go, go against. That did absolutely nothing. The offensive player ran right through. We want to get our hands on him and drive. Again, this is the control area. We want to get our hands on our, our offensive player and start trying to drive them out. As they get closer to the paint, that's when we might slap or lift. All right, but recognizing out here, all right, we can't, you know, we're, we're in good position, drive them out wide, again, so we control them. The slap check with a short stick, we we'll talk about a long pull as well, but especially with a short stick, does pretty much absolutely nothing, kind of just opens the gate. The offensive player ran right down the gut. Now let's go here now, let's go back to the beginning. All right, the defender approaches in the corner with his stick in front. He trails, he's going to trail the X. The stick is in front of him, it's not to his side. He's allowing him to trail into the X. Once he gets to the goal line, trying to shove him and be physical, a little bit higher. We like him to shove him on the hip, not the shoulder. It's a little unrealistic in terms of the offensive player you know, running through here, but you know, we allowed that to happen today. There are times where we'll blow the whistle and say, hey, listen, there's going to be 10 other players in the box there. That's not real realistic. That we kind of go for it. Offensive player does cut back in front of him. The defensive player kind of plants and lunges, although we do get a chunk, so not the worst thing. And now offensive player does a good job of running to space. That's another big thing on the offensive side of it. When you initiate, look for open space and attack it. All we're really looking to do, if we get a shot and a goal, great, but um, really just looking to initiate the offense and get the defense rotating. So that's what the offensive player is trying to do. The defensive player is just trying to stay with them. Because again, with a short stick, with that big of a run, there's a good chance we're going to slide anyway. So just trying to stay with them so he doesn't get a clean break. Good job opening and running. That's perfect. Hands on him. Tip your cap. Defensive player, they did a great job opening his hips, turning and running. Offensive player puts it off pipe, though. Yeah, let's go back here a little bit, uh, Coach. Um, Once again, approach, stick in front. As, as uh, Ned mentioned, we're going to shade to the X. Let him go to the X. And if he returns, you're right there waiting for him. And if he, if he comes this way, you can run through the crease. Back you go. So here when we're on the 45, we don't, do our, don't, don't, excuse me, don't get our hands on him. Turns the corner, gets upfield. So he's got that. He can get here. And if he doesn't turn the corner there, he can get the 5-5 five and five easily. On the 45s, we want to get our hands on the offensive player and try to drive him out to the corner. Right. Didn't shove him. One, didn't get a stick in front. So 
stick in front, trail the X. If he comes back, drive him off his line. Drive him again on his hip. That's a good job. So again, not trying to overcoach. A couple of simple points. Stick in front. Trail the X. Shove him at the goal line at the 45. Stay on his hip. Square to the sideline. Also, I just want to mention that there, obviously there are instances where we're going to slide. Right? Right. So, you know, um, usually short sticks, more often than not, you're going to slide to them. And as I mentioned, this initiation dodge, with this big of a head start, there's a good chance it's going to happen. We just don't want to get absolutely blown out. Right? If we get blown out outside the box, now a guy's coming down basically six on five, you know, makes it uh, much more difficult to guard. But there... Our defensive player previously did a good job of getting a chunk of them, running with them. So now when we slide, we can be the on-ball defender can disrupt while we slide. So that way, another good job. If the offensive player is having their elbow lifted and being che checked here, now we slide, now he can't make us pay. He can't look through the defense. He can't feed the crease. He's got an elbow lifted with the defensive player sliding to his face. Most likely he's going to have to bounce, get out, or roll away from pressure. Poles, more like we try to not slide to the poles, try to put them out more on an island, but obviously always. Let's just go back here for a second, just when you get to five and five. Uh, now, this is a really good job of, you know, trying to shove them, doesn't quite shove them, but gets, as the attackman frees, gets to five and five, all right, he's doing a good job now of disrupting. He's doing a good job of trying to get under his elbow, trying to be a pain while keeping the stick in front. So the defender has got good footwork, good position. He's dropping his hips. His stick is in front, and he's trying to disrupt the action. Um, this is a senior attackman, and you know he's playing with a lot of confidence. And you know it's, this is a good battle at five and five. Uses the as a yep, shoots around him, and you know just drops it underneath the crossbar. All right, good. Well, this, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously scripted here. I, I thought they did a really good job of getting out there. But more often than not, they're helping down the crease and then trying to spread out. So it's, it was very game-like because they're always going to be popping out from a different direction or from a different spot in the field. Sometimes they'll be nice and high in their straight line. Other times, you know, they just rode the ball back. They went in, they're on the crease, and now they have to come all the way out. So um, the, initiate, the, the, uh, the initial approach as again, kind of seeing how the offensive player is setting up, recognizing your own strength and weaknesses in terms of your athleticism, how far out can you get. Um, so that one is kind of, it's up to them. All right. So now, uh, for lack of, a better, uh, lack of a better phrase here, uh, now we're moving on to individual offense, the pick game, playing with one teammate. So we're, you know, we're working a little bit, teaching by yourself. And now we're saying, yeah, but that's not real realistic. Uh, as opposed to jumping into six-on-six -six offense or six-on-six -six defense, we're saying, all right, now let's, let's work a little bit when you have one guy to play with. And let's see what that looks like and what that feels like. All right? And so we'll have the coaches, uh, Coach Crotty today worked with below the goal line extended. And he'll talk a little bit about what he was trying to accomplish as he was preparing the team to play two-on-two uh, -two behind the goal. Yeah, so... Um did a lot of big little, and my main thing was working both working and sprinting with the ball and without the ball. The off ball uh, 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 offensive player working hard, sprinting. So again, both guys on the end line. The off ball um, offensive player sprinting up to GLE as if you were getting to the crease. Not jogging, not running really fast, but sprinting as fast as you possibly can up to GLE. Now with the with the hope of creating separation between you and the off-ball defender. Now you sprint up, that off-ball defender has to respect that you're going to the crease area. Now you put your foot in the ground and you come back. That does two things, as I mentioned, hopefully create separation between you and the guy guarding you, but also now requires the off-ball defender and the on-ball defender to communicate. Right? If you go straight across and the on-ball defender can see you the entire time, he doesn't need the communication from the off-ball defender. Even at our level, oftentimes that's where guys get screwed up. It's a switch, it's a pick, or a switch, a get through, hold, all sorts of different language gets thrown around, and you can't see the guy. So now, sprint hard up, 
Then then sprint hard up, sprint hard back down to the ball. The um, the dodging attackman or offensive player has to give that guy time. You can't sit there flat footed because these guys are really good defenders, so they're gonna come out and get you. So when you have that, you get the pass, slide. Matt talked about that earlier. Slide, slide, and then put your foot in the ground and attack attack a spot. And then it's a matter of brushing shoulders and then being creative from there. If you have the separation, um, if the off-ball uh, attackman has separation, that's where you can slip, or it's just a matter of teaching the creativity from there and, again, the skill work that you guys have. If you can do slips, great. If you want to set hard picks, you can do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of options there. But for us, it was the, main, the two main things were working hard to get up out of the defender's vision, sprinting hard down, and then the on-ball or the, uh, the dodging attackman sliding to give time, and then when you dodged, Again, sprint it as fast as you possibly could. All right, Matt. So we didn't really do much from the top. We didn't really do much from the top today. Uh, we did a lot from the wings, and we're, we're trying not to set hard picks in practice uh, because that's just the easiest thing to do is to set a, set a pick, is to run somebody and stop your feet. It's pretty simple. Um, so we're trying to get our guys to, again, look at the defender, look at the game, you know, what's best in this situation. Um, so we try to guys to keep, get our, keep our feet moving at all times. When you have the ball and we don't have the ball, right? Is it just, is the best just to clear through at that point in time, whether you're dodging from the low wing or the high wing, um, if you're off the ball, you know, if you're off the ball, is it get up there and set a slip or set a slip and drop, set a slip and roll to goal? Um, you know, so we're just, we're trying to get the guys to do something different, have a little creativity here, try to play in the gray. You know, we're not trying to give them too much in terms of information besides the fact that never stop your feet. Never stop your feet, never stare at the guy with the ball. If he has the ball, go up there and put pressure on the defense, create confusion by making the defense have a conversation. Every time you go up there and you slip or you jump cut or you, know, you just run past or run close, you, you get through really fast, you're creating a conversation with the defense that might create confusion. So he's trying to keep pressure on the defense, both the guy on the ball and the guy off the ball, to try to get them to screw it up somehow. You know, get to it somehow, you know, or just get a step. Get a step so you can attack an approach. So, you know, if you're athletically mismatched, you can, you can get it yourself uh, an advantage offensively. So we're just we're working on just trying to play in the gray. Um, the hard pick thing you can teach in a day, right? That, that doesn't, that's more about pick location than it is about fundamentals. Here on the, on the wings, we're trying to just create some pressure, create some confusion defensively by, by moving really fast with and without the ball. Matt was, was saying is reading posture, reading your teammates' posture. Is he going to the goal? What is it, knowing your teammates? What are their strengths? Are they left-handed or are they right-handed? Are they trying to set themselves up to get down the alley? Or are they trying to get themselves set up, you know, to get to the middle of the field? Uh, and those are things, you know, that are really important, uh, to, you know, that show that a player, an offensive player, has a really high IQ. And that's really kind of, as the coach was saying, we want guys to play in the gray. Everybody wants to be told, Tell me exactly what to do so I can be successful. And what coach is saying is, I can't tell you exactly. You're going to have to figure that out as you read, the, as you read your teammate, as you read the defense, and you're going to have to figure it out, you know, and then put yourself in position um, off the ball to get out of the way. And then with the ball, you've got to figure out how to use your teammate, how to wait for him to get through, how not to dodge into two, and, and excuse me, to create a normal double. Uh, and so we'll show you now on tape what that looked like this morning. So this drill is we're dodging from three spots. We're dodging from the left side, the right side, and behind. Both offensive players are continuing to move. You know, they're, you know, we like to probably see a little more pressure put on the guy on the ball. Um, and right now, we don't care about the size of the stick on the ball. You know, normally it's like, if there's a short stick on the ball, don't bring a pole to it. You know, that's not what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish some slickness. We're trying to create some pressure. This line here, we think is about 10 yards away from the goal, you know, that we step it out. So that last shot is about six or seven yards. Uh, we'll take that, all right? Camera guys, slip the wheel. There we go. 
All right, Ned, you want to just comment on that? You can comment on that from over there. Yeah, so here you can see, you know, we're talking about the, the Dodger and the Picker. Picker sprints up to GLE, gets the, uh, his defender running with him. Now when he puts his foot in the ground to come back, two things. He puts his foot in the ground to come back to create the separation, but also because the dodging attackman is sprinting full speed, this short stick here is hedging off a little bit more. All right, if, if he gets picked off, he's coming with a full head of steam. This uh, off-ball defender is worried about you know, hedging off so he doesn't get, uh, so he uh, doesn't let the Dodger turn the corner. Because of that, gets a little, little more separation. We slip it and are able to turn the corner. We end up missing it. But all set up because the picker went up field to create the separation and the Dodger went full speed as well. They read each other. Again, here, the, do the, uh, the defensive player. Is hedging off, gives us room here to slip, and get a shot from a yard, one yard off the crease. And we were saying, going did a nice job of holding his ground, of not, you know, stepping away, you know, getting to the middle of the cage, just held his ground at the pipe. All right, that's, you know, listen, that's a good job in terms of. He's clearing through really fast without the ball, which is great. You know, this guy's doing a good job of just creating space, creating this alley for him to go. Uh, it's an unrealistic shot by the Dodger, but again, this is a kind of drill where you, get, you let these kids go a little bit and try to give them some freedom to, to try some different stuff. But it's a good job of moving fast without the ball and then not the defenseman doesn't know if he should slide or not because he's being carried and moved to a spot that he's not comfortable with. Just go back there for a second, Ned. And also, um, like, like, what is the value from the first drill to the second drill, right? Like that first drill, everybody was just sprinting as, you know, as, as hard as they could, you know, for 20 or 30 yards. Now, you know, it's still beat your man, score a goal, and it's still, when you have the ball, you got to run as hard as you can. I'd like a little more action there you know it's like a lot of our times it's a lot of times like he just did what that guy just did you know because maybe he didn't get yelled at maybe the coach said good job so he just copies him you know we like to see a little more action and we do it we change that uh throughout the drill right like that group same deal they just did exactly what the group in front of them did The ball carrier never threatened the goal unextended, so the guy never had a hedge off, and the slip was kind of pointless. So. And that's also a big thing. You know, when it was one on ones on both sides, or two on twos, or three on threes, whatever it is. When this starts, the guy dodging for him, it's a one on one, and the guy guarding him, it's a one on one. If you dodge to feed, and you're not really dodging to, to threaten the cage, nothing's going to work out. That first one, the, 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 the slip pick worked because the dodging attack and sprinted and threatened the cage, so the defensive player guarding the picker had to hedge. This one, not so much. This is, this is a really good one, I think, because it shows high IQ by the off-ball offensive player right here. As he kind of clears through, he then comes up and gets involved in a two-man game, and he opens his chest up. You can run it. So as we get right here, Freeze, this is, if this guy was a little slicker, he could control him, right? If he pumped it right here, would he flex back and then he can get downhill, right? Or if he locks eyes with him and gets his hands back like he's going to shoot, would he get him to commit and then he can throw it right there? So if this guy was a little slicker, he could manipulate him a little more, but he does a good job of putting this guy in position, a compromising position whether it's slide or not. And as he kind of rolls towards the middle of the field, this is a very realistic two-man game right here offensively. All right, so we get the third set of attackmen here. Let's see what they do. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, up, up top of the corner. I like this one because this guy clears through with his stick up. You know, he clears through with his stick up. Like he wants the ball, sees the defender, turns his head to just look at him, and then 
We get some angle at the cage. That's a slick little finish by that young man. Clearing, getting through for your teammate is so important. There's a change of direction. Get to five and five, sit there. Two guys not on the same page. So this is, a, this is a bad job by pretty much everybody involved offensively. We run it back a little bit more. Okay, so the guy dodging is getting chunked, right? He keeps on running into this guy and getting, gets a piece of him the whole time. Now, the guy who clears through right here, when he gets into this, now all he's doing right now is basically creating a hot guy. So as the ball carrier goes like this and he just stands right there, now this guy knows, all right, I'm hot. That's all, that's all my job is right now. He creates no confusion by getting here and slipping and dropping. He just makes it very simple for this to read. This guy keeps on getting bullied with the ball. And at some point in time, this guy goes, this isn't going well for him. I need to go help him. Maybe I'll have it. The pole will cover me and he can set a pick for me. And then we can have a little two-man game going. But the one guy didn't want the ball. The one guy with the ball didn't look like he wanted it either. So it ended up being a little bit of a disaster there. Hold that for a second. And a lot of times what happens in some of this drill work is that if you don't explain it to them, guys think that they've got to take a shot in 10 seconds, they've got to make a play immediately, as opposed to back out, square up, and let's re-engage. You know, that there's this like, you know, some sort of internal clock that tells them, I've got to make a play now, I have to make a play. No, you don't. And, uh, and again, because drills aren't always realistic, because it's not six on six, it's not in a, a game-like setting, um, they've got to re be reminded, you know, of those consequences. All right, just go uh, rewind that again. Let me show that again. Well, defensively, right, uh, number 17 with a pole right there. He has a stick in front, but he lunges. Then he tries to make a check over the head as opposed to getting lower, getting on the hip, and staying in front of the, of the dodger. You know, again, let's, let's look at the concept the guys mentioned before. Does the dodger get the defender to hedge to create a bigger, a, a bigger lane? Hesitates a little bit there. We don't connect the pass. It's a, it's a high level pass, but you can see the off ball defender slows down for just a second, which back here is really all you need if you can connect the pass. It's not a bad job. It's not, it's not a great pick location. It's really far from the goal. You know, this is not a good job defensively. Now, but, de all right. now, defensively, we would say that the pick technique should be, just rewind a little bit. Ned, correct me if I'm wrong, but we should be on the back shoulder. Yes. All right? And so now what happens is because we're not on the back shoulder defensively, he's... He's in no position to switch, to hedge, to drive the ball carrier to the sideline, or to switch and just switch assignments, or to let his teammate go through. Um, because he begins in, no, in, in kind of this poor position, and then chases with one hand. Yeesh. That's why we're doing this. That's why we're practicing.
Dead air. Maybe that change in direction? <clears throat> so our top team MIDI and our top defenseman. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was a lot of standing around as the ball carrier. Yeah. A lot of moves in a very short space. It's a really interesting decision by this kid. Like he leaves him in the dirt and he tries to run into him for some reason. I don't understand that as much. Like I don't know why you wouldn't run away from him and run into but run into him for some reason. And he paid for it. Nice poise, though. I don't have to rock for a second, I guess. But. Go back in here. And Ned, let's just talk a little bit about the defensive technique initially. Yeah, so here is kind of playing him straight up, not giving him necessarily the alley or the, or the center uh, or the middle, just trying to get a chunk of him, get a good piece. Um, Matt's right. He does definitely get um, kind of gets beat to the middle. But now the on-ball defender does a good job of disrupting. You can see here he's a righty. He hooks that bottom hand off the stick and lifts it up, which exposes the Dodger. The, uh, the Dodger probably has, I don't know, 40 pounds on this guy, 40, 50 pounds. Minimum. And uh, because he's able to get that bottom hand off and disrupt him, he's able to get him to the ground. You can kind of see it here as you watch him, get the head of his stick under his elbow and hook him up and then drive him down. Do you want the defender to back up like that? The off-ball defender? Yeah. Yeah, that's what, because now, obviously, in a real game, there's... Yeah. We would have people here, 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 come game time. And so for now, the answer is yes. He's kind of, he doesn't want to be out all the way out there with his man. He can still, again, imagine the other players out here be, have his stick in passing lanes. So he doesn't want to stay out married to his man, wants to kind of come down even with the, the ball carrier. And we'll show you two more here. We're going to go back over that again. So this is a nice jump cut right here from the top down, right? Um, we're a little wide, but the guy can run it. So he does a good job of never stopping his feet. The guy takes a half a hedge. He does a good, ball carrier does a good job of running at the hedge and then throwing it to the slip. People have a lot of confidence throwing it to that guy who just caught it. So it makes it a little bit easier, but it was a really good read by both guys. Let's go back on that for a second. Here's a, here's a comment that Matt just made, which is something that I, that I love is the offensive player, he feels the defender that's covering him, but he doesn't look at him. He feels him. What he's really looking at is this guy right here. And so when he looks at him, then he looks, where's the slide coming from? Where was, you know, who was he covering? And so as he runs, go ahead, run it. As he, as he looks at that, then he's able very easily to find the open man. But you feel the defender that's covering you, you don't see him. You don't look at him. You're looking at the, looking for to make the next play. Same guys trying the same thing, having the same result. Tough day for both of those. And also here, our off-ball defender here is kind of cheating. He's not really running with them. He knows what the drill is. So instead of staying in front of him as he tries to cut to the front of the cage. He just waits for him to come back, which obviously he would not do in a six-on-six -six situation. Yeah, but then that's, yeah, that's, you know, what you just said, but that's like, so that's a product of this kid the offensively not just playing. He's just doing what he was taught, right? Like, if he's below you, then just keep on running this way. He'll throw it to you with your right hand and you catch and score. But he's not, he's not practicing. He's just getting through the drill. And once again, there's this fine line between teaching your players to be compliant do what I tell you to do, and then you say, all right. And, and here's, I, you know, I find myself saying this a lot. All right, now I meant to say that like 90% of the time, but if your opponent does this, then as Matt just said, well, then you didn't run around the front of the goal. All right, nothing is, you know, nothing is set in stone in terms of being, you know, uh, in terms of have to. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. All right. So um, the next slide is going to be about you know 
individual defense, you know, playing with one teammate, and we kind of covered that. You know, we kind of covered that a little bit in terms of, you know, off-ball position. On-ball is still the same thing. Off-ball is that back shoulder, right? We try to switch on any contact, uh, any contact at all, which, which makes a lot of sense because somebody gets chipped, they're going to be a half a step behind. Um, and there's, you know, the hedge concept in basketball. Uh, if you watch Duke, they're big men hedge all over the place. All right, and they just they step out, they drive the ball carrier away from the basket, which allows them then to recover back to the man that they were covering while the original defender can stay on his matchup. So that would be a hedge, and then, uh, and then getting through, right? If we want to, we can shrug up, we can be right up and, and right behind the man who's setting the pick, tell our, tell our teammate to drop, and this way he can take a, 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 like a, almost a banana cut behind us and then meet his ball carrier on the other side. A drop call is usually made on the perimeter of the defense, in the alleys, up top, outside the box. Um, don't want to make that call closest to the goal, closer to the goal. All right, so in the four and four setting that we're moving towards here. You want me to just uh, do this? So it could either be in a diamond like this, or it could be in a box, right? Box, it would just be on goal extends it up top. So the goal for today was offensive players, you can't spend more than a second in the paint or the crease area, okay? Don't establish a crease for the defense. Make them slide adjacent. Make them slide from the guy next to him, not from anybody inside, right? So we're trying to, you got to get in there, you got to get out of there, right? So what we're trying to do with our guys right now is just have them fill smart spots in the field, right? Playing the gray, there's not, a, there's not a select pattern of movements, it's just finding good spots in the field, right? So say if, you're, if four is dodging, right? The guys adjacent to them can either clear through, create their guy hot and then move back to the ball, they could replace number four, they could fade away from him, right? If he fades away from him, number two says, all right, he's coming near me, I gotta get out of here. Three says, I might be able to follow him. You know, if four dodges that one, one could replace him. These two could exchange as they go. Lo you know, just, we're just trying to move. Everybody's trying to move, but we're st trying to stay out of the paint, out of the crease. There's somebody in there in the game, right? So for us to just to fill it right now in a four on four setting is not a good idea. So we're trying to exchange and move when, you, when the ball's not on your side, right? A four on one play, a two man game, two and three. Do something, right? Fill good spots in the field. Cut in, get out. Get down the back, maybe. Show up, be a forward outlet. Diamond or a box, staying in that shape, playing in the gray, not letting the defense have a, a look at a formation that they're very comfortable with, right? Make them slide adjacent to you so you can just follow the slide and be spaced really well. So, um, you know, and this is not something that um, our guys are great at, or I don't think a lot of lacrosse players in general are great at because they don't play a ton of sports besides for just lacrosse and like you have to run by motion or you don't play, right? We're trying to get away from that. We're trying to get the guys just to look around, read their defense, read the guy who's covering them, read the guy who's on the ball, who's sliding, how can I think two plays ahead, okay? What are good areas on the field to be at, right? Good areas on the field, you know, depending on where the ball is, right? You need someone around the goal so they can back it up, you know? So if someone's dodging from right here, you need someone kind of around here who can show up either way, and then who can back up the goal, right? You need someone through the defense, right? So you need an outlet on both sides, a forward and a backwards outlet. So if somebody's standing here and he dodges this way, if four can't get through, he's got to fade. Three says that I got to get through all the way over there. You know, just guys playing, just reading what's going on, right? If two's too deep, three's got to get through. Three could get by in here and push two over that way to be a follow, just having outlets in front of you, having outlets behind you, having a through, having a guy near the goal unextended who could back up the cage and or make a play around the goal. So we're just trying to fill good spots in the field. And the idea of the four and four today was not to have a crease. Don't establish a crease, make the defense slide adjacent. You control how they're gonna play by your formation, right? Formation being not in the crease at all. And these are some of the terms here now while we're while we're talking about offense you know we'll be that to initiate to square up when you dodge 
you know, and go to the, you know, fake one way, go the other, fake right, go left, fake left, go right. You know, the weak side exchange. Guys, you know, don't let your defender stand and stare. Make him, make him turn and look, and where are you? Dive, all right, get to the crease, fade, as Coach just mentioned, and then snap, move underneath the dodger, uh, as you just saw in the two-on-twos. Uh, next, uh, this is a uh, team defense, Ned. Uh, no, no, I mean just, yeah, okay, here we go. Uh, yep, we got it, we got it. All right, now, listen, team defense, four and four. You know, once again, uh, as, as Matt has said several times, got to play. You know, there are some general rules, but you got to react and respond. Offense initiates and tries to get the defense to, to make a play, and then defensively, you've got to react not only individually, but as a group. Um, you do that, number one, by playing great individual technique on the ball, and number two, being in position off the ball that you've got to be able to make a decision at a moment's notice to make whatever play that's going to be required of you. And uh, that's what Coach is going to talk about right now. Yeah. So, Coach, you know, talked about obviously starts with uh, on-ball technique. But, again, whether that's whatever your defense is, take away strong hand, forcing him over top, forcing him down the alley, whatever that might be, and whether it's a one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three, four-on-four, your on-ball technique should not change. Right? You're guarding the ball. Your job is to stop it. Adjacents, all right, depending on what set they're in, if they're in an open, open box, diamond, all right, even if you're adjacent, though, all right, you always have to worry about passing lanes. All right? if, you're, if you're one away, obviously you're, 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 you're further, closer out to your man, all right, but you still want to have your stick to the inside to be able to cut down passing lanes. In a four-on-four -four situation, really what you have is you have the on-ball defender, you have somebody who's hot, and the other two defensive players are guarding their man and sharing the crease. Because right? if you're the hot man, if there, if there is a crease in the situation, if you're the hot man, you're off your guy in a position to help. Now, if the other two guys are shutting their men, then the crease guy's going to be wide open. So I call it man and a half technique. You've got your guy, but also sharing the crease. Um, and then communication is, is, needs to be constant. Help right, help left. I'm one, I'm two. The, and with this, we call it butt ball technique, where if I'm the on ball, def if I'm the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the hot defender, one thing that we always want to focus on is not having our chest to the ball. If my chest is to the ball, now, all right, I, can't, I definitely can't see what's going on behind me. It's harder to hear. I want to have my butt to the sideline where the ball is, and then after that, be chest to chest. So chest to chest with the two slide. So now I can see the dodge. I can see my man. I can see the two slide so I, we can communicate, hopefully use our hands as well. Hey, you're here. Watch the exchange. Um, and then, so then with the technique and then the constant communication. Usually when you go four on four, I like to think, especially after being an offensive player, the advantage goes to the offense uh, just because there's so much space. But so that, that makes this, the communication and the technique that we teach, that much more important. So, um, and then as I mentioned before, passing lanes, whenever you're adjacent, all right, we call it, we want to creep, we want to be nice and low, never standing up. Again, at our level, things happen so quickly. If I have to drop, to then move, that's time wasted. Also, we play against some very crafty players. If they see me drop, they know I'm coming. Whereas if I'm here in position, I can explode to the ball right away. So I always want to be creeped and have my stick above my shoulders. Something that these guys have learned since the day they started playing. But like Coach Dino talked about before, we still have to work with our guys having their stick out when they're on ball and above their shoulders when they're off ball. Um, and then the recovery. All right, whatever terminology you guys have, all right, whether it's you know, get off, mine, working on the on-ball, because we always stress here, communication isn't just talking, it's listening as well. If I'm the on-ball defender and I get slid to, whether I agree with the decision or not, I hear that mine call or get off, I need to put my foot in the ground and explode back to the crease, because obviously at that point, either the crease or the backside is open. So the faster I can recover, get back to even strength, the better chance we have of being successful. So a lot of different things. On ball, off ball, communication, the technique, and then obviously the execution of it all. One of the things, again, we, tell, we say to our guys all the time, we said this to the U.S. guys, you know, uh, the other day, everybody wants to cover the ball. That's, hey, that's where I make my money. I, you, know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a defender. I want to play the ball. But probably if you were to chart, you know, during the course of a game, 
I don't know, 80, 85% of your time is played off the ball. It's played in inside position, it's played in an adjacent position, it's played in a second slide position, it's played in the, you know, sticks up in the passing line position. So it's, you know, being a, a, a great defender is not necessarily being on the ball, but it's doing all these things and doing them well. So I'm going to show you what four and four look like today. Ball drill. Three balls meaning that four and four group will stay in. If you turn a ball over, that's considered one ball. If you score a goal, that's one ball. If you lose it and the, other, and the defense picks it up, it's three possessions. If you back up a shot, that's still, a, that's still the same ball. So this would now be ball number two. So guys are getting some, they're getting some rhythm both on both offense and defense by staying in for three, uh, three possessions. What do we say there on that dodge, Matt? Say that dodge stinks. Go back on that, would you, Ned? But let's just show everybody why, because this is pretty typical of young players, uh, this dodge right here. Yeah, I mean, his... Um Well, one, it's, it's just really bad spacing as well, you know. Um, you know, we just did a whole bunch of two-man game stuff, and now, like, we got away from it. And he, just, he brings a stick in front of his face, and defensively he has a good job with his stick out. Uh, but, you know, the whole point of the day is, like, playing two-man game stuff, and then we just completely forgot to do it. Um, and, it's also, and, and it was also running, running really fast. He made three or four moves in a very short space. Much better ball movement by the team of White right there. You know, they dodge from, you know, the ball moves from the goal extended to up top. We attack the pass. You know, you, One more you, time. you're covering the whole Nick. entire field there defensively. All right, Coach, you want to talk about a little bit about what this guy does after he passes the ball? That's a nice shallow cut by that man right there. He threw and then he cleared through and got out of the way. He didn't just stand there. There wouldn't be a time to fade. He was too close to the dodger to fade. Uh, so he does a good job passing and then getting underneath and getting out of the way. <laughs> Guy who shot that thought he was, thought it was Zion. Thought he could make something happen out of nothing there. Not so much. Nice idea with the slip though. That would have been nice, you know, I think the guy was looking to shoot it before he caught it kind of deal. Nice job throwing it forward, ready to move it. Here's the situation where the on-ball defender hears pick right. I'm assuming that's what he hears here. And opens up, stops playing the ball, anticipates the pick. Ends up kind of letting up a little bit. Now it creates a lot of separation. He's chasing and puts himself in a bad spot where instead of just guarding this one-on-one, -on -one, all the off-ball defender was letting him know there was a pick coming. He didn't say pick right, switch, just pick right. On-ball defender pops up. Now he's chasing at a big disadvantage. One of the things, too, you start to see the elements of the two-on-two -two drill in the four-on-four, -four, right? That was all basically two-on-two -two that the guys worked on. In the context of these two guys, also, uh, Coach, we'll talk about that, the weak side exchange in a second. Just show it one more time. And also that I would say this, that on the ball defense, you don't really care. You're listening, but you've got to get up and play. All right? His job is to be on the back shoulder and let you know what's happening. But your first job, first and only job, is to defend the ball and listen 
and he just lost his, you know, kind of lost his sense of where he was. Uh, Matt, you want to talk about just the weak side here, those two guys on that side? Yep, so this is kind of the exchange we're talking about right here on the weak side. Uh, this involves a lot of timing. Um, it involves some, some slickness, some intent. You know, this guy, the top offensive player, does a good job of cutting behind his head and then trying to find this opening right here. So we're really just, we're just changing spots. You're going from high to low, low to high. Um, but, you know, you're cutting behind defensemen's heads. You're filling the crease a little bit in case this guy goes. If he doesn't go, then you balance yourself out back that way. So you kind of make it a little bit of a V, right? And then on the outside, you're doing a little more of a C cut. So you're ready to catch and attack the pass if you can. Or if they slide adjacent, you're just going to be the forward outlet right there. So, um, you know, this, I wish they would have moved a little bit earlier. So as this guy gets to the middle of the field, he would be like right here, right? He's outside the dodge here. So as they slide adjacent, this is an almost impossible pass to make. If he was down here, you can get out of the feet and throw it forward still. And one more, you could have the one more and, and some action there. So there's a good job turning the corner with the ball and with the ball and stick, but just wish this action would have been a little bit sooner and then right there as opposed to just, you know, that's exchanging there just for the sake of exchanging, not with a thinking two plays ahead. Think come to the ball. Yeah. And there it was almost. There was what uh, Coach just explained. Just didn't hook it up. A little bit, you know, uh, a little bit tougher angle, but. Now let's talk about the defense there. Let's just go show the defense. Um, the slide here and recover. So we slide. And guys rotate. Now, I don't know if we were communicating, but then he would recover back this way, away from the ball in the four and four, and he does eventually. So that's yeah. not too bad. No. Guys were trying to, you know, trying to get that right. So the idea is, if you remember, we started with one-on-ones, individual techniques, we built it to two-on-twos, so you see the elements of it now in four and four. And then eventually, uh, you know, if we had time tonight, you know, we would show you six on six. But the idea is that it was part whole, that there was, a, there was a preparation for each one of the drills, then there was doing the drills live, getting some feedback, um, and then continuing to get repetitions, uh, you know, in a very short period of time. Keep rolling. So we felt today's, yeah, keep rolling. So we felt today's practice was really productive in terms of you know watching our personnel and uh, you know and letting them play a little bit. Good shot. That's a nice shot. Low, lower corner. Mm. Uh, let's talk about why that happened. It's a really good check. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> I'm not unbelievably sure what happened besides the fact the guy with the ball and stick is moving pretty slow, uh, and it was poor stick protection. Um, it's a pretty slick check. Uh, you know, when you hear a switch call, you throw a check in there to, you know. To disrupt. To disrupt it. Uh, I, I would say it's bad stick protection by number nine, but I wasn't. It's a funky one. All right, now this is, uh, now at this point in practice, let's go back to that a little bit. Uh, Matt, uh, just explain to everybody now all of a sudden, why did the ball go behind the cage? I think we just were looking for some creativity, looking for some, something different. Um, you know, set up in a diamond, it's, it's been a lot of two-man game on the wings, um, as opposed, you know, if it's a three-ball drill, you should be trying to do something different every time um, and not just, you know, the same thing three times in a row. Guy had a tough day. Okay, the whole idea, uh, anytime, you, anytime you roll, you've got to drop your hips. Your legs have to be a little bit wider than your base. And then so you lower, you lower your hips and you create a greater centrifugal force. You can move faster. Right now, look at, his, look at his footwork when he tries to change direction. Right, his feet are really close together. Makes it really hard to do. 
And he's a terrific athlete. Right? Stupid. That guy's a terrific athlete. Push, 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 but push he reduces himself because he's not paying attention to his footwork. That's a little bit better now. Let's watch that. Let's watch the footwork here. And we were saying this goalie play here. Goalies don't get their stick to the ground. You don't have to catch every save. We'd like you to, you know, if you don't catch the ball, you can block it. So by getting your stick on the ground and getting your body behind it, if you miss it with your stick, your body can make the play. You can run that back, Ned. Looks like this group is trying to revolutionize lacrosse here by sending three guys below the goal line. You know, like this is a freeze. Someone's got, someone's got to make a decision. Like th these two guys are not watching anything besides the guy with the ball. You know, no one's looking around. This is, you know, it's just, it's just something that they're doing here. Um, but to me, it shows that they're not, they're just being premeditated. They're not just playing. Like someone's got to make a decision. Drop out of it, throw it, drop out of it when he sees them going that way. I don't know, but that's a mess. And you're going to get that, and there are times you're going to get that when you let the guys play a little bit, right? When you allow them to, to you know, to make some choices on the fly, and, and, you know, and hopefully you can point those things out and, and explain that to them. And um, Two offensive players exchange. I think we've been working on exchanging off ball to try to occupy the defenders. The defenders do a good job. They can see each other. Hey, just switch. Not worried about the matchups. Hey, you stay there, I'll stay here. Now we're in good position off this top dodge. Now, this is an attackman who does a nice job slipping. And he's been doing this behind the cage. He's been watching the other guys do it. But watch what happens now when the ball comes towards him. How he doesn't snap underneath, and the whole thing just gets kind of, it just slows down. You know, doesn't maybe get underneath, doesn't allow his teammate to clear through, and because he hasn't drilled up top probably, and it looks different to him. And so even though he's a college player, and even though he's a senior, they still need that repetition of what it's like on both sides. And we'll leave with that one. All right, so that was a little bit of four and four. So, you know, again, the part hole concepts, individually, uh, offense and defense, one-on-ones, two-on-twos, four and fours, it was today's uh, lesson. I think we had one more. Do we have one more board here? That was it. All right. So it's uh, 9 o'clock. It's Monday Night Football. It's uh, the New York Jets and the New England Patriots. Tom Brady's. Um, they're looking to go 7-0. and The Patriots, Jets, two in a row. So, uh, you know, now you can flip the channel, finally, in a minute or two. I want to thank everybody for watching. We want to thank again... Meredith Reeder, we want to thank Chad Lapman for uh, working through our audio difficulties. We want to thank Coach Matt Tanowski and Coach Ned Crotty for being with us here tonight. We want to thank the guys here. This is one loyal band of brothers in this room. These guys are phenomenal. They've been coming here since day one. And uh, we are really grateful to get to know them over the years and, uh, and really happy that, uh, that they're in the audience. So uh, thank you so much uh, for watching. And uh, we'll see you in November. Thank you. Wow. All right. wow. All right. How was that? <laughs>